The Lilly Company is a supplier of warehouse equipment sales, and majority of which is forklifts. Obviously our bread and butter is forklift trucks, but if you have an empty warehouse and we walk in, we can fill it. We're really the A to Z. With a company lasting 100 years is impressive. Fourth generation family business, I think is really special. My great grandfather started basically out of the back of his car, and today we're almost 120 million in revenue. Memphis in 1919 was having a very favorable year. World War I came to an end that year. A large number of men returned, entered the labor force. Memphis was on the eve of a great deal of improvement. In 1919, Thomas F. Lilly founded the Lilly Company. We were bringing in commodities such as linseed oil and petroleum jelly. We would then sell that in 55-gallon drums to companies who would then repackage and retail that commodity. That market started petering out. Thomas F. Lilly realized early on that he was going to have to diversify. The home had no refrigerators in those days. Everything was ice boxes. The iceman would show up with his tongs with a block of ice over the shoulder and come in the back door and put it in the ice box. There was an opportunity there to create a piece of equipment that was able to sort all your ice. He was definitely ahead of the, ahead of the curve, a uh, pretty inventive guy. He filed many, many, many patents. With the appearance of electricity, made it possible for people, of course, to uh, not have to have ice delivered to their homes. Refrigerator food freezer like this. And so the ice business kind of dwindled to nothing. The pallet that we have today was invented in World War II. My grandfather saw that there was a niche for material handling. We moved into the actual lift truck industry. One of the mechanics in the early days came to my dad and said, we're just sitting around the shop. We don't have any business. We're not. And my father told him, just go back and sit down. Don't worry about it. The business is going to come in the future. And uh, it did. One thing that really became most important of all in Memphis, more so than the river transport, more than the rail transport, but that, of course, was the establishment of FedEx. FedEx became one of our larger customers back in the early 70s. I had come back from the service retired with my wife and the four kids and a dog, a cat. Uh, the second night there in the house, uh, my father pushed back from the dinner table and said, Joe, I have a question I'd like to ask you. And I said, yes, sir. He said, uh, I'd like you to come to work for us. And I said, well, sir, I'll let you know in the morning. He said, son, you got three seconds. One, two. I said, yes, sir. We knew that the company was going forward because we had someone else to lead us. He faced two of the largest financial collapses in the history of the country in 1982 and 1991. The good times are not always there, but we persevered and came through it. From 1919 until probably the early 90s, we were basically one location. We started opening multiple branches in the early 2000s. We started making acquisitions. Toyota approached us about becoming a dealer for them. It was a no-brainer for us. Today, we have the largest gross sales we've ever had in the history of the company. Largest number of employees, largest fleet. Big change for 100 years to start for one single person selling linseed oil to where we are today with 287 employees. There was three family members there before me. What makes me proud is the family business. Most uh, companies don't make it past the first, second generation. And here we are on our fourth generation. My grandfather would be surprised at where his company has gone. The number one thing that has carried us over this hundred years is having visionary leaders that see changes in the marketplace, that see that they have to adapt to them, or possibly diversify into something completely different. Even in bad times, they're going to survive because of the way they do business. I take pride in the people that work here. I'm astounded every day the knowledge that they have, and the abilities that they exhibit. You can't survive unless you grow. In the last 20 years, that's been our primary focus is growth. We have good leaders that lead us. We have customers that support us. 
And all of that will carry us through to another 100 years.